director of the Billups Group, and Crystal Mitchell of Mitchell Solutions and Reflecting Black Dollars. Crystal Mitchell, let's kick it off. Uh, good morning, everyone. Glad to have you. I'm uh, recording and as well as getting us uh, live on, on Zoom. Uh, so welcome all everyone to the community uh, business briefing. Uh, our purpose is to help our community make sure that we're getting all of the pertinent information that we need to have in order to uh, do business in this city and uh, and globally as well. Um, so there are a lot of people here that are sitting at the table where the decisions are being made. And so you need to know what's happening and how you need to maneuver and, and navigate your business. So I'm Crystal Mitchell. I am the co-director of Recycling Black Dollars. This is a, this is a joint effort between between um, our Recycling Black Dollars and the BBA and Vermont Slauson. It is my utopia of us coming together to work together to build a, bit, a bigger and a better America for Black Americans, African Americans, descendant of slaves, whatever you want to call yourself. <laughs> That's how I see it. And, um, and I think the only way we're going to make changes in this community is for us to work together and to come together. In addition to that, I am a business coach. I work, um, I do a lot of coaching uh, for the for our community business owners. I work with the Los Angeles Urban League. I am one big collaborator, that's what I do. And I also, um, and I am the co-host of a show called The Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert. We've been on the air for four years and our purpose there is to highlight small businesses and those professionals in our community. Uh, so again, so people know that you're here. So tune in to that show every Friday afternoon live on YouTube and Facebook and also every Thursday at 11 o'clock with this one on Zoom, but we're also um, uh, broadcasting live on Facebook as well, and it will eventually be on YouTube. So thank you, welcome to our guests, Ms. Deborah Lankford from uh, JP Morgan Chase and Mr. Justin Grant. We're so pleased to have you here. I wanna welcome, wow, we got some heavy hitters in the house today. We got Byron Reed, we got John, he's all the money people, <laughs> John May. We have Patricia, uh, Dexter uh, Malloy from the South Bay, uh, Chamber of Commerce. So everyone, welcome. Julius, J uh, Jan, uh, Jan Vanderpool, glad to have you all. And our regulars, thank you for coming back. And hi, Michael, haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. So with that, I am going to introduce my co, I have two co-hosts here, uh, Stephen uh, Turner. Uh, he's representing um, his company, Slayton Group, and as well as the BBA. And I am, and my other co-host is Ms. Robin Billets, the connector, and she's with the Billet Group. So uh, I'll turn it over to Robin. Good afternoon, good morning, guys. Um, again, we have an exciting uh, presentation today. Um, last week we had Pacific Coast Regional on. We're, the mission really here is to bring as much resource information to the community so that folks are not saying, nobody told me. So, so we, what we ask you to do is to please Share the, inf the invitation when you get it. Let's broaden our network so that the more information that's out in the marketplace, the more um, um, pulled together folks can be and find the resources that they need to move their business along. Um, we've also had a presentation about the census and as you guys all know, census got shut down. So th the only thing we're gonna talk about now is vote, 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 vote. It is so very critical that we get out as many people as we can Use your LinkedIn, use all of your social media to grow the numbers for this show, to grow the numbers for our voting. And one of the things that I wanna leave with or end this with is we need to learn how to vote consistency, consistently. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the missions that Crystal has is with this, with this weekly briefing is to not only just do it during COVID, but I think it's become so critical for us knowing what's going on in the marketplace. And so again, thanks for you guys taking the time to join us. Please help us grow the network. And we're always looking for great speakers. So again, you know, shoot us an email and also like us on Facebook and all of the other social media things so that we can um, broaden our network, cast a net far and wide. Because again, folks will have a fear of saying they don't know. And our, my mission in life as the connector with the Billups Group so that you cannot say you don't know. Now, what do you do with the information? And I'm a big proponent of implementation. So what we're doing today is implementing information. Thanks again. 
Thank you, guys. Thank you. I voted yesterday, guys. Drove it right to Norwalk, put it in the box, the big old huge box, not burnt down anything, just big. <laughs> With a lot of other, uh, uh, and I was told there are a lot of undercover agents that were in the parking lot. So if you want to feel safe about your vote, take it to Norwalk. It's worth the drive. It's tw 25 minutes for me. <laughs> Steven. Got to unmute. Unmute. It was my pleasure to uh, introduce our special guest, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, um, Deborah Lansford. I'm not even going to look up her profile. I know her from back from Quincy Jones to USC, and now J.P. Morgan Chase is so fortunate to have her on your team from the community where um, she's a beacon. She, she speaks for many of us. Without further ado, uh, Deb Lankford. Thank you so much. And I, I need to be a little dramatic on my entry. So if you give me one second, I'm going to go off video and I'm going to come back on video. Okay. One second. <laughs> I just want you to know. Hold on one second. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. And good morning. <laughs> we are real. There you go. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Right. And uh, just to let you know, I actually do wear those. So thank you so much. Hold on one second. I dropped it because I have, I have uh, things to uh, to showcase with you all. Um, thank you so much, Crystal, uh, for that opening. And I like that you have so many revenue streams. Uh, you know, that's the key. We got to have multiple revenue streams. And I want to make sure that, um, Stephen, please send me all of the shows and the times that uh, Crystal described, right, both for the organization and for her, um, I will absolutely promote it and amplify it. Uh, Robin, good morning. I have to tell you, we share being the connector in person. I have it as my uh, Instagram, Deborah the Connector yeah. Langford. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing better than being a connector and to amplify. Uh, and Stephen, it is so good to see you. We have known each other uh, for many, many, many years, and uh, I'm thrilled to be here. And as uh, Stephen and Crystal shared, I am joined by my colleague, the wonderful Justin Grant, who is calling us in from New Jersey. And uh, Justin runs um, Communications for Advancing Black Pathways. So I'm really excited to join this community briefing. And as I was thinking about it, right, I know we want to talk about our transformative historical unprecedented announcement that just happened about the path forward and $30 billion. But I also want you all to know who I am for some of you who don't know, right? Um, I am a Los Angeles native. I was raised in the Crenshaw Lamert Park area right across the street from Audubon. I went to USC. What's really, thank you. And what's really though important is I want you to know that I know what being a black business owner is like because one of my very first jobs after finishing USC was working for the very successful entrepreneurship family, the Stennis family, right? Mm. In the restaurant business, or as my sister reminds me, fried chicken. Yeah, <laughs> golden bird fried chicken, okay. right? 18, right? 18 locations across Los Angeles, multi-million dollar revenue, right? We did the first ever Laker Girl poster. I'm friends with Paula Abdul now because I, I airbrushed her then. That's another story. <laughs> but, but, you know, the very first Janet Jackson video was done in the Golden Bird Fried Chicken location on Beverly, which is now a Starbucks. But most importantly, I know what happens when something impacts the Black community. Because if it was good news and it was a celebration, we knew it, our receipts went up. And if there was a challenge, if there was something financial that hit the Black family or business, we also knew it because the receipts were down. So I know how you can be running a business and things that are external to you can truly impact you. So from Golden Bird, I had a very successful media career. I ran Quincy Jones's television company. I started actually started at Hanna-Barbera Productions, meeting Joe Barbera and Bill Hanna at an NAACP luncheon. Went there, turned to my right. People looked like me, like people on the screen, and they were at best polite. They said hi, and that was it. Did not engage me in the conversation. I turned to my left, two 76-year-old white men. We decided to have a conversation, talked a lot. I went to go say hello, came back. They said, we really like you. We think you should work for us. I said, well, what do you do? And he said, well, I'm Joe Barbera. And he's Bill Hanna. At that time, it was only Joe and Bill. And I said, hmm, Barbera, Hanna, no. 
Oh, Hanna Barbera. Oh my God. So I tell that story why? Because I think it's not just about an individual, but even in business, sometimes we're going to do business with people who don't look like us. And you can engage them in something that they would have interest in if you engage them, right? And I was ready. I had a good conversation. I went through, I did my research. When I finally had that meeting with Joe Barbera, I convinced him to hire me and I walked in as a director level executive. So I went from Hanna Barbera to Warner Brothers Television. I ran Quincy Jones's television company. Uh, Robin's shirt has Girls Trip on it. I actually started Essence Entertainment. I was responsible for the Essence Fest years three, four, and five. When Essence was a black owned company, once again, I know what it is, right? Although I don't know what the girl trip movie experience is, just so everybody knows on this. But mm -hmm. I understand black business, right? Now I've had the, the journey in my career to work for a very small family owned one. And I worked for one that really was iconic, right? With Essence and the brand and uh, doing brand extension, right? Went from Essence. Uh, did a small stint at a black owned urban entertainment.com, right? First ever trying to get into the content business, right? Uh, we, they did the movie Undercover Brother, solid. And so I did that. Uh, again, working for two black men, okay? Then I moved into working for Time Warner for the black man, Dick Parsons, and was very thrilled to bring in top diverse executives. They put the internship program under me. Then I moved over to NBC Universe and worked for RLA Paula Madison, who was running the KNBC station at the time. Two Telemundo stations took the diversity job because she wanted impact and she hired me and we got a lot of things done. Then I stopped at uh, USC for a while, five years running diversity for the business school. And I wanna let you know, you know, USC is the number one private employer in Southern California, right? So in addition to my role, in bringing in black students and wanting to make sure that black students were well represented. I wanted to make sure that we had black staff and we had black faculty. Those faculty jobs, if you get tenure, that's lifetime. And in addition, I encouraged the black MBA students when they were doing their projects to find local black businesses to do projects with. And I made sure that when USC would allow a vendor to come onto the property, that they were black vendors. So I know what this is, right? And then I had the good fortune to have the opportunity to come into my new role, which is the executive director and head of business development for advancing black pathways. And let me tell you why I am proud to work at JP Morgan Chase for two reasons. Well, there are many reasons, but I'm gonna tell you two. One, JP Morgan Chase was the only bank that financed Earl Graves' vision for black enterprise when he had it 50 years ago. When Earl had that idea, he went to several companies, several banks, and everybody turned him down except J.P. Morgan Chase. And as Butch Graves says, his late father, someone who I had the great honor to spend a lot of time with, Earl Graves, only spelled bank one way, C-H-A-S-E. The second reason I am super proud to work at J.P. Morgan Chase in my career, actually now there are gonna be three reasons, is that I work for advancing black pathways. Yes, we are under the diversity and inclusion initiative, but it's advancing black. That followed the launch actually a few years before this of advancing black leaders, right? Intentional, transformative, with expectations to deliver outcomes programs that have black in the title and the delivery was going to be black. We have more managing directors who are black in our bank than any of the other banks. We are doing advancing black pathways, which are response. We are focused on three areas that are critical in the black community, education, careers, and wealth. And now we have launched advancing black entrepreneurs that I wanna talk more about, but let me go back to advancing black pathways. When we talk about education, which we know is the journey into really having options, whether you wanna go work in, a, in our bank or you wanna go work in corporate America, or you wanna start your own company, we know that education has to be the foundation. We have a commitment to hire 4,000 black students, not underrepresented students, not diverse students, black, 4,000 black students in five years, right? And we're tracking. We're, I think we're gonna actually exceed it, even with COVID, right? I don't know if any of you saw the Show Me Your Walk HBCU edition, where we decided advancing Black Pathways, pitched it to the firm and said, here we have 
something so special, right? The graduation from an HBCU. And because of COVID, that's not gonna happen. We have Michael Sorrell on our advisory board who of course runs Paul Quinn College. I'm hearing a feedback, okay. So um, he brought that idea to Tashunda Brown Duckett who's the CEO of JP Morgan Chase Consumer. They talked about it. We talked about advancing black pathways. We educated, we executed a celebration with 78 HBCUs celebrating 25,000 black graduating students with 40 people, including President Obama. That's what we do. So a lot of places are taking out ads. A lot of places have 16 point plans, but I would challenge you to see if there are those that say black, black initiatives, black outcomes, have a history of black, have people in the organization that are black. That's what we're doing. And the third reason, and then I wanna talk more about um, advancing Black entrepreneurs and this historic announcement is that in my entire career, I have never worked at a place where I where there are so many impressive Black executives with significant portfolios in my entire career. And many of them are here in Los Angeles. Deirdre Porsche is the managing director, divisional leader for the state of California for the business bank. I hope you all know Deirdre. She, she's running all of California business banking, a system who is fabulous and caring, strategic and purposeful. We have Mikhail Quarles, who's the national field, oh wait, I wanna make sure I got his right title. He is the national field manager for Chase for Business, focused on minority entrepreneurs. And he's Gary to stand up a program that's gonna be specific of in, specific interest to you all. We've got Malcolm Johnson, who I think many of you may know, who's an executive director focused on community development. And we've got two private bankers uh, who I think are outstanding. Rick Berrigan, who's been with the firm for 32 years, and Noah Francis, who's a HU alum in the private bank, where you know they're going to bank everyone. But when you're talking about applying to the private bank, that's 25 million liquid. Those are brothers who are in that private bank to bank those bankers. Right. And we also have Chelsea Crowder, who joined us from Goldman Sachs, who's in the private bank in, uh, in, in, the other, in another area that is the I think it's the just was it five to 20 area. All right. So that's me. That's Advancing Black Pathways. I've given you a bit of an overview. Right. We've done Advancing Black Leaders. We've done Advancing Black Pathways. We launched an Advancing Black um, Apprentice Program, again, to make sure that students come into our bank get the foundation that you can get from our bank and go and and go back to school and decide when they come out where do they want to work but here's what's great again i want you to know this year we had 78 apprentices from across the country right what was their project to help black banks they worked on a project with for two black banks to help them improve their social media strategies you know what you you bring in black black students you pay the black students and you have the black students not work on one of your wicked problems wicked problems is what a term at usc which means a very important one not a bad bad wicked <laughs> but but a very difficult problem you didn't bring them in to do that you brought them in to help black banks that's what we did so let me move on because i know there's going to be some question and answer let me kind of give you the overview of this historic announcement that we launched um, we are, oh, and well, let's see, I'll, I'll do that and I'll come back to advancing black entrepreneurs because I think that's probably what you're going to want to talk about, right? $30 billion announcement. If you all look up axios.com, they are, um, one of the places that has looked at all of the announcement that fortune 100 companies have done, um, since the George Floyd tragedy, 58 of them have come together. They've made announcements from, Apple, $100 million with my girl, Lisa Jackson, running that initiative to 10 million to 1 million. So guess what? 58 companies have now committed to $33.54 billion, right? Mm. For racial inequity. We're 30 billion of the 33.4. <laughs> We're 30 of the $33.4 billion, okay? So what I would say to the companies on this call is that 
there are opportunities. If they're going to say and stand up, we are going to invest in Black and Latinx uh, initiatives. Clearly, that has to have a business piece, a supplier diversity piece, a vendor piece. I would be looking at the 58, including us, absolutely. I'd also be giving a little bit of shade to the 42. <laughs> I'd say, okay, wait a second. Who would, are there any other 42 based in Los Angeles? What are you going to do? What's your plan? What's your strategy to improve and increase Black businesses? Um, the 30 billion is really focused on um, areas that are really critical to Black people, right? Uh, we're talking about home ownership. That's really where I think the, the real weight of it is. Out of the 30 billion, 26 billion will be launched for uh, refinancing and new home loans, um, including commitments to um, affordable lending, affordable housing, which is really incredible. It's we're going to originate 40,000 home purchase loans. That's 8 billion in mortgages, 20,000 black and Latin households to achieve um, lower mortgage rates. That's important because we know usually the biggest transfer of wealth in the black community is a home, right? And so I know that as business owners, it's oftentimes you've got to be looking at your home as part of the revenue stream. We're going to finance 100,000 affordable rental units, which is 14 billion in new loans. But let's get into what part of that commitment is for Black and Latin owned businesses. We're going to provide over now the 30 billion is over five years, as all the other uh, commitments are. They're not just for one year, they're for five years, as I talked about those other companies. Um, we're going to provide 15,000 loans to small businesses in majority Black and Latinx communities. We're gonna deliver $2 billion in those loans, right? So we're, as I mentioned, Mikhail Quarles, who's based here, he's traveling now, uh, but he'll be re returning next week. Um, he's gonna launch, he's, his unit is launching a new program designed to help entrepreneurs in these historically underserved areas to access to coaching and technical assistance and capital. We're gonna accelerate digital lending product to better support the needs of small black and Latinx owned businesses seeking quick access to capital. And we're gonna spend an additional $750 million with Black and Latinx suppliers. Um, this announcement, right, is fantastic. I wanna pivot back to advancing Black entrepreneurs. So here's what we did. We partnered with the US Black Chamber of Commerce, the National Minority Supplier Diversity Council, the Urban League and Black Enterprise to look for 2000 businesses, those, those four, can reach 350,000 businesses.